Shout out to the sponsors of the video. Full disclosure, paid sponsorship with Prime XBT. Been working with them for two years now. They've been supporting me in the channel. If you want to support me, one of the ways you can do that, use that Prime XBT link in the description. Use code MAIN50 before you deposit any money. You get 7% deposit bonus. I still have 20% deposit bonus code. So if you want those, shoot me a message. I'll send them over to you. All right, let's look at Bitcoin. A little bit of tricky spot. Obviously, a little bit choppy. It's been messy right? It's been messy. It's been hard to trade. We've now swept the lows of the last three weeks, and then we swept last week's high. So we're in a little bit of a kind of sticky spot here, but I'm going to map out some scenarios that I'm watching. But from a high time frame perspective, we're still just waiting, right? For price to give us some sort of clue about where it's going, right? So I need some sort of expansion one way or another to then kind of get some confidence in, you know, a potential trend forming. Because right now we're at the bottom of this range and we've had one, two, three, we're in the middle of our, at the beginning of the fourth week of just kind of sideways. Looking at the weekly, there's really not much to update here other than we swept the lows and now we swept last week's high. So gun to my head, I think the sweeping of the last three weeks lows is bullish. I know that we're sweeping this high here, but I do think that there is a chance that we can push up maybe even back to this mid range. I think the safe long is going to be above this old mid range here. So what I've drawn out here is the fair value gap on the weekly chart, right? So it's this low to this high here. Okay. This is a fair value gap. You can see we came up into the fair value gap. We rejected now. If we come up to this fair value gap again, I think the likelihood of rejection is significantly less. This fair value gap is also perfectly overlaid with the mid range of June. So to me, the easiest long signal is a reclaim of this. If we're able to get back above 28K, I think we trade to 32 above this high and above this high. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you don't take any trades until then, let's say we go up to 28, right? That's an 8% move. And then after 28, we go to 32. That's a 12% move. So in total, it's a 20% move higher. But if you wait for us to reclaim 28K, you're missing the start of the move. I'm okay with missing the start of the move. I don't need to catch the entire move. I care about catching the meat of the move. So if I have some confidence that if we get back out of 20K, 8K, there's a high likelihood we trade to 32. I'm okay not catching the first part of the long and being aggressive once we have that confirmation. So that's kind of the easy long trigger that I see. The second long trigger that I see is going to be a sweep of June's range low, which we almost got, but we effectively have equal lows here now. So these two lows are basically equal. Then we have this low here, okay? And then we have this breaker. I also think that a potential long opportunity would be another flush down into here. And maybe that's something that we buy on strength at that 23K level. So that would be the next area. If we're going to break down lower, 23,300, the middle of this breaker block is the next area of interest for me. Now, zooming in to kind of the more interday chart. So as you can see here, we took out the last three weeks lows, we pumped back up, and then we swept last week's high. Now we're trading right at this breaker here, right? Because this has become a breaker. And we're finding some support here. So you could argue that if we're not going to sell off lower, this is where price should go up from. So you could find a long here, right in here, or maybe you have a looser stop. And that could be the trade that takes you into the mid range, something in this area, basically saying, okay, this is going to be support now. And I want to see price trade higher, you could take if you have an aggressive stop, you could take a more conservative target of 27k. And this is absolutely a trade that I see the logic of 12 hour breaker. This is the up candle that took out all those old lows, we shifted to the upside, we broke market structure. Now we're retesting, so I absolutely could see this being the area where price holds 
and then pushes higher. So that's what I'm gonna be watching here over the next little bit. But for now, I don't have a very clear signal. To be honest with you, I'm probably gonna let CPI play out before I decide to take any trades here. And we could see a lot happen tomorrow, and then we have interest rates on Thursday. So we could see some fuckery, we could see this move fully retrace. Lots of shit can happen. But for now, to me, this is an area where if price wants to trade to 27K, potentially higher, this down move should sustain and this should be the low, right? So it should retrace into here and it should not breach this low if we're going to go higher towards 28K. So that's kind of what I'm watching right now on Bitcoin. I wanna see what happens tomorrow. Maybe we dip a little bit deeper into here and that is a long opportunity that I potentially would be interested in taking. We get some sort of bullish price action in here or if we even just get a deeper pullback. So within this move here, right, if I zoom in, I would like to see within this price leg here, right? We have a very clear fair value gap right here. And if you put on your regular fib, right, your sweet spot is right in there. So something I could see potentially happen in CPI here, right, is a move down into here quickly and then a move up. But if you're bullish on Bitcoin, right, and you think we're going to go higher, you think that 28K is more likely than 23K, I would want to see this down move be the low, and this breakup, we're looking for a retest here in this area from here down in like here. I want to see that hold and uh, I'd be interested in potentially taking along there. Effectively, this is the range. Any sort of move below the mid range, I would want to see get bought up quickly. Target here. Target two would be here. Target three would be the high time frame mid range. That would be kind of the long scenario that I could see play out. Perhaps we get a bit of a pop up first and then it happens. But that's the bull case, in my opinion. If this thing is going to go back towards 28K before going lower, and we're not going to take out this low or any of those other lows I mentioned, this needs to hold. And whatever this pullback is in process here needs to be capped no lower than, in my opinion, around the OTE of this swing. So I wouldn't really want to see price trading if I'm a bull below 25, 400, let's say, around the OTE here. And any sort of move down into here. I want to see the bull step in. So if we come down here, I want to see bullish price action here. I want to see the bull step in. I want to see a sweep of a low and then a move up on the lower time frames, right? I want to see, right, this kind of shit happen in here. And then that would be a long I'd be interested in taking up into here and then up into 27 and potentially higher. But for now, it feels like uh, I'm forcing it. I think there's cleaner markets to look at as opposed to Bitcoin right now because it's just a little bit choppy. It's a little bit of a choppy mess. So I'm just I'm just hoping to get something that's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more easy to trade. But this is the area where it should hold if this is going to make another leg higher. This down move right here needs to sustain. Let's look at Ethereum. So Ethereum came up, looks significantly weaker than Bitcoin, right? So if you wanted to long one of these two, right? Take a look at FBTC. It's like hanging on by a thread here. To me, Bitcoin is probably the better long. The structure looks better. Ethereum looks much more like a bearish retest here, right? We have a 12 hour break in market structure. And then we have an upside test of that resistance. Yes, it came back strong and in one candle, but until proven otherwise, it's a bearish retest. If you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin, it's effectively the same price action, right? Except for Bitcoin is doing this right now, right? Where Ethereum is just testing the underside. Bitcoin is broken through that level and is retesting the top side. So Bitcoin, if you're wanting to long one of the two of these, Bitcoin looks stronger to me just based on the chart. And that's exemplified, exemplified in Ethereum BTC, just kind of looking fucking, you know, weak right now. Um, I still think this is an area where it could potentially form a bottom, but it is it is looking relatively weak. So keep that in mind. But Ethereum, I, I, I don't think you want to long this thing right now. If anything, you know, shorting the bearish retest seems to make more sense if it reclaims this 12 hour order block here. So this is, um, you know, basically 1630. Then you could make an argument to long this thing towards the upper parts of the range. But for now, this looks like a bearish retest. Bitcoin seems much more attractive if you're looking for a coin to long out of the two. OK, so quick look at the dollar here. I'm still bullish on the dollar. Um, I still think the dollar trades higher. 
I was hoping it would come down and test this order block here, but it might not. It might just go up from here. Uh, and if that's the case, that's okay. But I'm still bullish on the dollar. I still think we trade to 105, 106. And um, if you're looking at the dollar on the high time frames here, to me, like let's say you're if you're a diagonal line trader, has this not already broken out of this? downtrend line, right? So maybe we get some sort of retest, but it looks like it's breaking out there. For me, I like horizontal levels more, but that being said, we're getting very close to a super key area. If we break out above here, I think we fill in this fair value gap here on the weekly. So if we get a convincing breakout above 105, 106, I think this can trade to 107 up to 110. So if that happens, let's assume that dollar does this. Bitcoin's going to do this. Ethereum is going to do this. Euro USD is going to do this. Gold is going to do this. Anything that is denominated in USD is going to get smoked. And the things that are numerated in USD, like USD JPY, USD CAD, those things are going to go up. But that's what you have to be concerned about. You know, if you're looking at the dollar and you give credence to the confluence that the dollar provides when looking at other markets. I think the confluence is much more potent and important with traditional assets, but absolutely something that you want to be aware of is if the dollar has a major breakout, right? That's not going to be good for crypto. And I think that it can trade a lot higher. I think it can trade up to here if it's going to break out, like it's into resistance. It's coming in in resistance here. So for crypto's sake, you want this resistance to fucking hold. So if you look at something like UJ, right? Like the whoever, someone was saying, hey, look at UJ. It looks like it's gearing up for a huge breakout. Look at the monthly here on UJ. Does this not look like it wants to break out higher? To me, it does. Like it's either this is the lower high right fucking here, or this is going way higher. And if this is going way higher, right? That means the dollar is going way higher, probably not good for Bitcoin and crypto. So that's something you're going to want to keep an eye on, right? My gold analysis, I posted this and everyone was like, no way, man, gold's going higher, blah, blah, blah. I need to go find that tweet that I sent the original one where I drew this out. I posted this. I said, I'm looking for a short to form here. We got the trigger there, right? We got the trigger right there. We got another trigger here. I didn't end up taking this one. I still think we probably clear out this consolidation, but there was some douche nozzle who's like, no main gold Gold's going up. You're wrong. Your big box won't save you. And it's like, okay, well, we're down fucking huge since I posted this. I know huge is a relative term. It's only like a few percent. But in TradFi, this is a big down move. And I still think it's going to go lower. I thought we were going to push a little higher here on ES, right? So I'd marked out this resistance. We'd come up into it. We had mapped out a nice short up here the other day. I definitely thought this bounce um, was going to come up and run these highs again. When I was analyzing this yesterday, I thought this might have more juice and I thought maybe we would go up here and get a short. That's still possible. We could still absolutely come up here, but right now this is looking kind of heavy. So this is your H12 range. So I'm just waiting. If we get a break below here, I will then look for the next bounce and I'll look to short that into here. Uh, but for now, we're within this H12 range. I'm not short from up here and I did not short this yesterday or this morning, whenever this was. So I don't have a position right now. I need to wait and see which way the market is going to break. If we break below here and make a new low, I'll look to sell the next bounce into here, but I'm not counting out the potential of another move up. And then if we fade up here, that is a short I'd be interested in taking. A little crazy out there, isn't it? A little fucking nuts so. I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. Why is it my responsibility to fucking go and say, oh, that's bad. I'm not the fucking police. I fucking got you. You shouldn't do that. I'm better than you. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't fucking know, nor do I care. I'm back on friend tech, baby. I tried to fade it, but they won't let me. Buy my fucking friend tech, guys. Quit LARPing. How about you shut the fuck up? If you don't want to listen, fuck off. I don't give a fuck. Nobody cares about your opinion. I don't really know enough to have an opinion. At this point, I think I just watched due to how attractive I found me. Thank you, Jim likes dogs. I don't know how to take that. How about you shut the fuck up? Canada is a fucking shithole these days. Link Marine says Canadian dollar is monopoly money coming from the guy who's called a Link Marine. It's not my job to protect you from doing anything. That's your job. And it's not my job to tell you what to fucking do. If you do both, how do you determine which one? It's a combination. Like that new Drake song. Combination. <laughs> like what the fuck? 